Welcome back everyone to Codec Memories. We're going to continue off where we left Martin when Solid Snake had just defeated Sniper Wolf. Of course. Um, and this is when the game started giving us more information. Because up to that point, we knew enough what was happening with Snake, the mission. But there were still questions getting asked, especially with Campbell. Was he betraying him? Trust. He, he, that was it. Was, um, and I think what I loved more like during the cutscenes, um, you were just getting glimpses of Metal Gear. You never totally seen Metal Gear yet. We knew what it looked like, but we never got. I the, had a broad idea, but it did a really good job of hiding it. Like even the advertising for it, you only got like bits of it. Like you mm-hmm. would see a foot or the cockpit. You yeah. never seen the whole thing all at once. Yeah. So. Very good, oh, so you like the only thing it's comparable to is like when they when Terminator Two came out, and they were doing that whole thing. What which one's the evil Terminator? Yeah. And they kept teasing. Was it Arnie? Was it? Robert Patrick, and you didn't know till you saw the film. It was just it, that's the kind of cleverness that they were going for, and it did work. Because where we left off with the the first defeat of Sniper Wolf, Snake gets captured. Aye. Um, and the torture scene. The torture scene, which starts Wait, explaining a little bit you more. You remember mm-hmm. just before we get to the actual details, part of the build up to the torture was uh, Ocelot saying that he could tell if he used a turbo pad uh, yeah I do right. remember I do remember Aye. but he was a liar yep he didn't know he didn't know he's just a bold mullety bastard liar so I used my turbo pad anyway I remember, I'm a dick. I remember at the time I used my turbo pad as well um, <laughs> and he had two options either survive it or you give in. I pack it in. Um, which changed the ending of the game. Yes. At the yes. time, going into Metal Gear Solid 2, it made sense. But Aye. then with 4, it didn't matter what way it went, if you if you know what I mean. Aye, they, they decided this is what happened, whether you like it or not. So let's go with it, he's gave in. Aye. Okay, so that's the way we're going and to go, he's gave in. From there, they start hinting at medals locked up somewhere yeah um you basically don't see Meryl again um Aye. a couple of mentions but Cause she's dead yep <laughs> in the game she's dead that's it Aye. um over Meryl. so but we'll come back to that Metal Gear Solid 4 that's down the line but now we know we've got one ending set up and it wasn't really a bad ending um because it made sense for Metal Gear Solid 2 but well, <laughs> one of the few things. I mean, one of the few things that yeah. made sense because I think with this Metal Gear talking about how the game goes through um, is probably the nicest thing to do because the game deserves it. With right. the other ones, I think it's more. We've got so much to say. There's no even point going through it. As the two will have a lot of shit to talk about. Um, and yeah. same with three. Um, as masterful as it is, but this one was legendary. And the way it was setting up, that's you, you're captured, you're in a cell, and then you're trying everything to try and get out, um, from the ketchup to the <laughs> codec to try and unlock the door. so clever, though. Like, oh, yeah, it was brilliant. This ketchup, what? And Otacon drops it off, and you just have to leak it all over the floor and lie on it so that the guard panics. Is it stupid, Johnny? I was going to say, is it Johnny? It comes back in right. again. Aye. Oh my god! What happened? So and you stand up and punch him and run away. <laughs> because this is our thing. Because remember, I think is it with. I think it's with if you fail, does he catch a cold? No, no, you can catch a cold if you stay. Like, Snake himself can catch the cold from Johnny. Right. If you're in the cell too long. Right, right. And you can find cold medicine. I think it's just because, you know, he's he's only got the, the like, the trousers and boots on. Mm-hmm. And if you stay too close to Johnny, who keeps sneezing, you, you end up getting whatever illness he's got. And, you know, just now and again, just like a wee sneeze here or there. But by the time, like, if you don't treat it, it gets worse and worse. Because basically that's his back at the near enough the start of the game 
Ah, um, that's where they dump you. It is basically the way. It, but up to that point, it kind of held your hand, and then this is when it kind of opened itself up. You, I wouldn't say it was sandbox uh, style, but no, it's not. It was you know you did have a big area that you could go yeah. through, but it, it wasn't set up for you to do what you want when you want anything like that. You had an objective, and there was there was only certain doors you could use because mm-hmm. of the key card. But now it kind um, of opened itself up, and then you start exploring. Oh, I- Aye. Some of the places you couldn't get a to, bit more, and you find little weapons that maybe you would miss otherwise. Yeah, um, just just little touches here and there, and that's how you could get things like the mind detector and that things that you maybe not get normally. <clears throat> See, I got the mind detector straight away. Um, Aye. if you go around that block after the first call from Deep Throat. Yes, uh, but, uh, like, but if you I, missed it, personally, you... I never bothered. I just crawled. And yeah, used the the goggles. But, but again, this was great about Metal here. The, the, There's all these different approaches to each situation that are all equally valid. I it opened itself up by this point, but that's by that point the game held your hand so long. Now it's like, okay, you know what you've got to do now, and Aye. and here's your objective. You know this woman's caught. You need to save her, take out the terrorist leader. And get the fuck out of there before yep. anything else happens. Yep, there's nothing you else now. Metal Gear, if you can. So, we make our way back to the first battle of Sniper Wolf, and we get that, remember that cutscene in the codec call? It was quite... Yes. And it, this is when it starts, like, you're seeing the human side of Snake. Yes. Whereas, he never really showed that, he was quite a badass. And uh, very stoic, but in this, he was blaming himself for what happened to Merrill and Campbell's crying down the phone to him. Um, um, just terrific voice performance. Oh, it was, everyone. A, it was amazing that point. Um, and, and also, I mean, you need to remember this is like what, the same year or the year after House of the Dead 2 happened. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, that was the standard for, that, that's for what, voice actors. That's thing. what I was saying. Even if you look back at the Resident Evil um, game, the original, and you look at the voice acting of that when somebody died, it was laughable. Yeah. Um, after yeah. the snake, I can't remember who they killed. Um, but when you know something happens to Meryl, you're engrossed in the character. You're and engrossed you're in right into the performance because Perceptor himself sells it. Yeah. so well. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a movie like um, scene. How they're yes. describing everything that's happened. And then we're on the build up to quite frankly an amazing showdown. Getting to the top of the towers. Oh man, what a set piece. Getting up the first set of towers annoyed me all the time. But thank God for stun grenades. The, the guys chasing you. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for stun grenades. And then grenades. you had that amazing pursuit tune playing. Oh dun, yeah. Dun, 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 and dun, then dun. we keep, if I remember I'm trying to remember how this whole played out because so you needed rope. Up on the roof with a high D. <laughs> no, as, as you got the rope and then you had to repel down. You had to repel down the side, well, which was brilliant. That was amazing. That segment. Aye. And he was blowing bits off the wall in a high D. What's then, a Russian gunship doing? This? <laughs> that's when you've got your stinger, and then as soon yeah. as he sees you've got your stinger, oof, he's away. And you're thinking, Aye. right, okay, that's that. That He's gone just now. Aye, he's not going to be stupid enough to come back for round two with that. No. <laughs> and then when we, oh. the lift doesn't work, and then you yes. hear the helicopter oh, going around. Oh, that is one of my favourite moments. Because that's, so, that's the scene with Otacon, and Otacon's yes. questioning, he, why should Snake kill point? everybody? Snake's not that heavy. <laughs> oh, that's after it. Aye. That's, that's after just, it. That's just... The first thing I think of when I think of that lift. Because I remember that scene and the way... Classic. Yeah, it was because of the way that she getting engrossed in Otacon's character, who later on mm. it's just that you cannot separate Snake and Otacon throughout nope. two and Even four. You, you need day two. <laughs> and the way they're, like, they're doing the scene... Um, well, fuck, what was I saying? Because I always thought it was cheesy, but it was actually quite nice. Now, you know, uh, Do you ever think love blooms in a battlefield? And I was like, this isn't oh, a battlefield. Fight. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, this isn't a battlefield. <laughs> I mean, shut up, doesn't ahead. make sense. Jumped ahead. Anyway, this time was that... no, 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 Mark, I've no jumped ahead because remember he brought it up once but then dropped it, he didn't say who. 
He, he brought it up, but he didn't say who it was. He just mm-hmm. asked the question, and then that's when he said, "I've got a buzz, a buzz or some fly to take care of." Aye. And then that's where we got that <laughs> epic boss battle with the hindy with liquid snack. <laughs> and I mean, there's like ways you can do it. There's like, I th- is it right in saying you could actually do it with a PSG one? If you're I lucky, know. I really don't know. I know you could do it in Snake, uh, the Twin Snakes, but that's because they fixed the control system. You didn't have to lie down and use a sniper rifle. Aye, that was, that was weird. I, I, I never did it that way. If you could, I, I just I did try the Nikita. Oh, they are obviously the the stinger. The stinger's the right way to go. So we know we've got to use the stinger to take care of the hind D. Like you said, we've tried the Nikita, but this is when you're trying to figure out how to take this on. Aye. And you take the hind D down and you think you get rid of liquid. Oh, it's such a good scene because the the copter goes down past the building, the camera's got snake framed in the middle when you last shot it, he pulls out a cigarette, he starts smoking and the explosion goes off. <laughs> class. Absolutely class. And then you get all the calls. You just took out a high D. But the yep. funny the funny <laughs> thing is, right, obviously after you beaten the game, but when the second time you played it, did you try and call a certain someone to see if they would answer? What one? I don't, I don't want to give it away. There's a certain someone. You can call during that battle. I probably phoned everybody at some point, but the lean was like, um, I think I know who you're referring to, and, yes. he did, and he didn't answer. He didn't answer. So this, mm-hmm. so you don't really click on at that point, but you're like, okay, how's he not answering? But everybody else answers. No, just something. Um, Deep Throat doesn't answer, but we know. But he, oh, we know who he is. We know who he is, kind of because he's. He's somewhere near you because he's emitting the bus transmission instead exactly. of the the wavelength. And you know that how how many characters on the base are actually friendly to you, yep. and you've got two of their numbers. Yep. So it only leaves one. Yep. So that that one was quite obvious. But we get to the section you liked, and it's the lift. It's such a good moment because you get in that lift. And it won't move, and it beeps, and then snakes kind of, and then the phone goes off, and oh no, sorry, you call Otacon to ask him about if the lift's working or not, and Otacon can't figure out. Then I know where it works. And it starts moving, and Otacon <coughs> calls back and explains that he had four more stealth prototypes, mm-hmm. and when he went to get one for Snake, they were all gone. And how weird it was. And then he has that Eureka moment where he goes, They're on the left with you! That, oh, God! That that was brilliant. Um, and then when you put on your thermal goggles, you can see the Aye. four bodies. Or if you're quick enough, you just use your far mass and just start shooting. Take it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> because this is us basically now in the home stretch. Um, yes. Two metal shit's gear. hitting the fan. Um, <laughs> you're still having some conversations, but there's... Not a lot. Well, the exposition really doesn't kick in until you're past the next three areas. Yeah. Because you've got, like, obviously there's a snowfield, there's a giant fridge, there's the blast furnace, and then there's the actual hangar. Yeah. Where everything really happens. But before that, you get the bottom of this lift, there's still more cameras and things to deal with. And then you're in a snowfield where you have... Just a goddamn great sniper fight. Yeah, that that was that was one of my favourite like moments of the game. Um, because like Sniper Wolf always like a, a, all the characters. She was like one of the favourites amongst fans. There was just something about her, and the Maybe. twin twin snakes <laughs> twins. I know twin snakes kind of ruined it with that stupid way how they killed her at the end. Where he done that backflip and kicked the gun up, and I'm like, "Fuck it, we'll strip it." Um, Not as stupid as when he fucking backflipped over a missile and rolled it. Trying. When did he do that? There's a scene where somebody fires a missile and they backflips over it and then kicks it back in. Oh, twin snakes! But fucking nonsense. 
he had that epic sniper battle and uh, it is basically that's it you're just running about using your thermal goggles can you see wolf um because she as much as like uh, she was not even camouflaged but she blended in perfect with the scenery mm-hmm. and then that's when we get the autocon Loved the Sniper infamous Wolf. speech yeah the infamous speech because she let him feed the dogs from time to time and it kept his breaking his heart um, because like the person he really cared about was killed and then yeah. you seen the pack of wolves come over yes and okay, <laughs> it was it was uh, it was it was I think like as a game at this point where now it's not just a boss anymore. They'll try and make it like now there's like, they feelings. They humanise them. They did yeah. it. With, hell, they even managed it with Mantis, who's the weirdest of the lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, You're starting to have the feelings towards the characters for good or bad reasons. Yes. Um, In fact, the only one that wasn't really truly humanised through the whole thing, um, well, the only two really were uh, Ocelot and Liquid. Yeah, Raven. Raven was very humanised. Raven wasn't in any way evil, and he only went along with this plan out of respect for Liquid. Yeah, more than anything else, because he, that... he didn't have anything. Like he never really cared about the, whatever country it was, and he didn't really expect that the nukes would actually be used or anything like that. No, he just wanted to help his friend. And now we've got to basically going through this furnace. Um... Well, there's a few things you've got to take out. I mean, I've actually just got flashbacks to Metal Gear Solid 4 because I was like, is there a furnace? But yeah, the furnace oh, is yes, there. Oh yeah, the blast furnace. The blast furnace is there, Metal Gear Solid 1. And speaking of Raven, we have another boss battle with him. Yes. And In a giant fridge that, where you have to make sure he doesn't see your breath. Yeah, it was amazing. And his field of vision was... Very Shoot. bad, very bad. Because um, I always remember, remember that rumor was going about if you beat him, then you can get his gun, and it's like what? <laughs> That's a rumor, and every remember people like, J- yeah, I've seen it, and this is back in the day when the internet was still a baby, and it's like right, right. okay, there was no thing you can get that gun. There's nothing. No, the only thing you could do in that was you could piss him off by shooting the crows. If you were really lucky with the timing, and it was hard to do because there's no shooting in first person, but sometimes the crows would kind of land at a similar height to what you stand at, and if you ran shooting the famous, oh, or if you the like, fired a missile round from behind them, yeah, you could blow up the crows, and he would get angry. That that was a great boss battle, and like you said, that humanized him again. Because Aye, that was cracking speech. I mean, like everybody, even now. They should go back and play it. I know yeah. it's a little bit basic compared to modern stuff, but just that, that's it's a story. Te- it's a storytelling, mate. And um, the characters were so well thought out. Yeah, basically the opposite of MGS Five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And lo and behold, through the next door, um, we are greeted with Metal Gear. Yeah, Metal Gear, and. <laughs> Wow, I just remember seeing it for the first time. What a great sight, because they they do this thing with the camera. Like, the whole game, more or less, the camera's always above you, save for some special moments, you know, like when events are happening, like in the tower, it's like a side view as you go around the stairs. But for this, the camera's sitting at a third-person angle when you come through the door, and as you walk through, the camera pans slowly up to reveal the full size of the bastard thing. Because I'm trying, huge. I'm trying to remember at what point Campbell basically opens up. And oh, it's that, after this. It's right, <laughs> right. So you're basically going around. Yeah, you're right. It's actually in that area. It's um, in that area. You're right, and that's where we get the. You find out Colonel, in a way, has been using Snake. Yes. But because of. But Meryl. also getting used himself. Yep, <laughs> and it was because of Meryl. Aye. That was the whole reason he was the biological dad. Yes. To Meryl. So he wanted Snake to go there. So there were selfish reasons, um, but he never explained it to Snake. And there was a lot of things he kept from him. 
Yes. A lot of things were kept from him too because oh, yes. uh, once once you've dealt with some of the like you find out the key card gimmick where it has to be used normally, you have to go back to the the fridge room and freeze it and then run like fuck back to the Metal Gear room and use it. And um, then you had to go to, or, or you mean you could do them whatever order. Yeah, and then, like, it, was a great, it was a great gimmick. Up, run back. Uh, very smart, but Campbell confesses everything to you. And then we get um, that emotional call from Naomi. Yes. Bef- this is on the last, the, the final trek back. Um, Aye, because the this key can deactivate Metal Gear. There's not going to be any nuke set off. And then the the reason stuff has been happening is because the snake's been injected by Naomi with fox dye, which basically can inflict certain cells in the body to mimic a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And the reason she'd done it to get close to him was because Frank Yeager was a brother who is... Adoptive brother. Adoptive brother, (laughs) sorry. Who is the cyborg ninja. Meanwhile... Meanwhile... She gets locked up. Campbell fesses up and gets replaced by... Uh, the Secretary of Defence, yep, Jim Houseman, aka Bastard Man, yep. Um, so that, this is oh, he was a scumbag. So basically, all you, all the only people you've got left for information is Orcon or Mayling, Nastasha, or Nastasha. Yeah, uh, that's it. Um, Miller sometimes called a few times. Yeah, most of the time he's AWOL. He's AWOL. Um. But we go back to Metal Gear to insert the last key. That's it. That's it. Yes, that's it. You're thinking you've done it. Okay, done it. Up you, liquid. Up you, fog sound. Up you all. So you put the key card in, Martin. And <laughs> then there's a call. There's a call. Because Metal, Gear's, Metal Gear Rex is activated. And Snake's panicking. Yep. What has he done wrong? And the call comes in. And it's Master Miller. Everybody's favourite cripple man. Who has been AWOL through through certain fights, certain segments. Basically from Sniper Wolf's death onwards. Yeah. And confesses basically it is Liquid Snake. That's Liquid Snake. He wore a pair of sunglasses and tied his hair back. <laughs> that was how the fuck? But, and changed his voice slightly. Yeah. <laughs> It was, <laughs> it was so funny. Did you know what the worst bit was? Everybody fell for it. Yeah, that was it. You never seen it coming. You never seen it coming. <laughs> uh, then, but, but like, it's, when you actually see him show his face properly, you, you just wonder to yourself, how the fuck did I not see that? I know. Because Shinkawa's art is so good. Like, he, he's managed to disguise him convincingly, but... There's no mistake in it that the, the face shape's the same, the colours on them are the same. What well, like just, oh, like I said, on. mate, he always reminded me of MD Geist. That's who uh, he reminded me. It, and, it, it was, had that sort of B plot where they're yeah. wondering if there's a mole and uh, like Miller would call you and ask you to cut off Campbell and Naomi from it and then explain, right, Naomi's up to something because blah yeah. blah blah. And that's how Fox Die came out. Yep, because he was worried. Yes, he was worried, and it was it was so brilliant. the 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 Codex stories, um, were brilliant, and that's that's the reason like the podcast was called after that because without the stories and the and like sort of the Codex calls, I think Metal Gear would still been a great game. But yeah, but it story, wouldn't have been Metal Gear. Uh, it would have been Metal Gear. That story was covered a lot in the calls and the cutscenes. You need the calls; they just made it that extra bit special Aye. so Mark now we're at the, the final battle um, and depending on what difficulty you're doing it on is the hardest battle Aye. absolutely and it's against Metal Gear Rex which mm-hmm. is low, the music well the music the first version of Fight'em was great Aye. Um, and like that's the thing when you first start this fight you can't really get a lock on and you're not sure like with the stinger and you can't use 
like anything smaller than it because it's not going to do a damn thing. If you try and line up a sniper rifle shot, you're going to get lasered or blown up. Yeah. So you start calling everyone, panicking, and they can't give you advice until you get told about the radar dome by a certain source. Yep, drop your chaff grenades and just start shooting that radar dome. Aye. And it exposes, it, it, it takes it down a bit, but it doesn't totally destroy it. And then... I, the I know, Yeah, the, the, it dropped the, the mouth. mouth. Cockpit the technical. cockpit, I know. But, um, and then we go, an amazing scene. An amazing scene um, with Frank Aye. Yeager jumping back in. you sure this is it? Snake's done. Metal Gear's going to stand on him. And then out of nowhere, the cyborg ninja shows up and shows his face to Snake and gives this really heartfelt speech about what the last fight had meant and how he looked at Snake as a soldier. And you learn a great deal about him yeah. from that. And then with that gun cannon on him, um, taking on the Metal Gear Rex. Yes. And then the death of Frank Yeager. It was hard. It was hard to watch because it's like he totally redeemed himself. Aye. It, that and there was, was a like, lot to redeem. <laughs> yeah, there was. He totally redeemed himself, and you're like, "Holy shit!" And I think that's why all these years after, no matter, right, okay, you had Cyborg riding. But nobody has came close to the fan favourite of Frank Yeager. No. Nobody's came close. So it was really hard to watch that. And it was like, wow. So then you want to kill Liquid even more. He's giving you more reasons um, to hate the character. And uh, well played. You hurt mm -hmm. a bone. You hurt a nerve, sorry. You hurt a bone, but you hurt a nerve. Um, and again, amazing storytelling. And again... Up to this point, we never had anything like this. So, cockpit's open, and you fire the rockets back in, as Aye. usual. Even more explosive. But, of course, then you find out that the Secretary of Defence has authorised an airstrike. Yep, they're going to flatten the island. And they're on their way as you fight. <laughs> so, Metal Gear goes down, and explosions everywhere. Snake wakes up. And he's tied up. Yep. Again, one of the rare uses of different angles. You get a first person view. Yeah. Yeah. Of, uh, Liquid. And Liquid has a fine speech about how they're both uh, equals as yeah. soldiers. But Snake is his brother. Big Boss is also his father. And Snake got all the good genes. They were created. That uh, was that was mind blowing. That it's was really mind blowing. Yeah, nobody seen that coming. No, but Liquid was obsessed because Solid apparently got all the best genes from Big Boss to make him the ultimate soldier, which made Liquid work harder to achieve what he did. Yep, uh, and try and match his brother. He was the inferior twin, and... and he was obsessed with this fact. Yeah, utterly obsessed. And that's the reason that like, he went to Foxhound, took over the unit. It was brilliant. And then you see... Oh, and of course there's the whole genome soldiers thing. Yeah, that's We're right. We're all injected with Big Boss's DNA to try and see if that would make them better soldiers. But all of them were dying. Yep. And they needed Big Boss's genes to they, change that. They needed the remains of Big Boss um, to cure it. And that's what everything was building up to. It was just yes. remains. It wasn't because all global domination. Knew, all we know at this point is that Big Boss's remains were kept after Metal Gear 2 by the US government. And, like, we don't know where they are, we don't know the specific details, just that the US government, when they cleaned up uh, Zanzibar land, they went and scooped up whatever was left of him after Snake killed him again. Yeah. And and just kept the body, presumably to create things like the genome soldiers. So as far as we knew. That that was that. And the other reason why this bit was very emotional it was because in you gain control of Snake, you turn around yes. and there's Meryl lying there. Aye. And it's basically a fist fight to the death. 
yes, were those on two. top of a broken down Metal Gear Rex. It was brilliant. It was it, it was really fantastic. Was. So we went with the the bad ending. It was not a bad ending, but the ending everybody thought was a true ending. Um, mm-hmm. considering going into Metal Gear Solid Two, and you defeat Liquid. And you go over to make sure Meryl's okay, and she's not. No, no, very not okay. Very not okay. <laughs> Which then confuses the fuck out of everything. The tight it fucks about the timeline, but yes. then it makes sense when it comes back. But it fucked yes. with that timeline. But uh, Auto so Con- Meryl's dead. Meryl's dead, point. and Autocon shows up, and basically it's a similar speech to what Snake gave to him. Mm-hmm. About how he felt about um, Sniper Wolf. Yes. Uh, so that's it. The the bombing started. They've got to get out. And then yeah. they jump on a jeep. Snakes on the turret. And then lo and behold, who's chasing you again? The best line in the game because you're in this tunnel. You're busting through barricades, and all you hear from behind you is Snake. And, liquid. and liquids bobbing up with our farmers. It was brilliant. And that I love that chasing. Great I fight. really it great was, fight. It was brilliant. And then you finally go to use a machine gun in first yeah. person. And the explosions are chasing you. This psycho's trying to ram you into the walls of the tunnel while shooting at you. And you're fighting the soldiers who are setting up their barricades as you go through them. And it just got right out of hand. It was so funny. <laughs> So you make Why? so you make it out of the tunnel. Um, if I remember, both cars crash. Yes, right. there's a massive crash. Massive the crash at the exit. And like Snake gets up, so there's Autocon. but the bombing stopped. What's happened? Aye. And then the codec call comes in. Colonel Campbell's got back his command. Aye, and managed to get the, the chairman arrested or the secretary arrested because he's trying to drop a nuke on yep. Shadow Moses. Yep. So, it's it's it cleared everything up. Um, basically, like everything's done. I think that's it. And then, lo and behold, again, <laughs> liquid pops up, but you don't fight him. It's just a cutscene. No, and he's got his gun, and he's coming for you. And then, just as he's about to blow your head off, Fox die hits him. And now he goes like a sack of shit. Because <laughs> Naomi basically tells Snake and basically tells you that the Fox die was programmed to kill off these certain members. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't know what will happen to Snake. Aye. And then you're left guessing. So it's just enjoy your life. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, uh, Autocon and Snake exchange first names. Yep, so David and Hal. 2001 reference, Dave and Hal. Yep. Inseparable. And... Best buddies forever. <laughs> then he goes off in a, a, a snow snow Snowmobile, which snow just wheel. happens to conveniently be there. Yep. Um, well, a lot of gets and he does explain that, actually. <laughs> and it's... And then after, obviously, the credits, you get that call um, from yes. Ocelot. And it's the, the president. So no, it's not even that. It's just when he explains it. Yes, he thought he was the inferior one right up until the end. Yes, yes, I'll report back at once. And then it goes quiet. And then, Mister President. Yep. Boom, boom. <laughs> so we. So Snake, as in Solid Dave, as the inferior clone of the two. Yep. The president has a vested interest in the events of Shadow Moses, and you don't know why. Liquid had all the best bits of Big Boss and went insane, just as Big Boss himself did. And you're just left kind of hanging there. I mean, it, it closed. It closed the curtain um, on the game for a while. Oh yeah, I mean, it, like it wrapped up other storylines that had yeah. been going that we didn't know about until we played it. Um, Everything was just fine. It was just all wrapped up because they had no idea how this game was going to do. Yeah, it's... no one ex- like Konami thought it would sell well because it was a unique action game, but they weren't expecting to create this behemoth. The, the, yeah, the cult status that it, between that 
in Final Fantasy VII is still yes. regarded as that is they're the greatest games on the PlayStation One system. Uh, and Metal Gear Solid shot straight up to a system seller to the point where Snake is he's one of the greatest characters to hit gaming. Aye, everybody um, knows who he is. Easy. Yeah, and it, it's weird when you think back to that, back to then, because it was an amazing game, and you look at everything you can get these days. I know. And and, it's had its influence in almost yeah. every every game. Uh, like some, they've all got an aspect of Metal Gear in there somewhere. I mean, I, I mean Mario. <laughs> I took... Like my my game of the year, I put down. It was a brilliant game, not the perfect game, but yes. it was close. But when you go back and look at Metal Gear, like the way we spoke about it and Aye. talking about the story, that was the perfect game. Yes, and there was, and very... it also had stuff to do again. Like once you finished it, because mm-hmm. if you knew what you were doing, you could fly through in like maybe two, three hours. Yeah, um, um, because of the the different. If you, say, if you not, say nothing metal, unique for games of that time like Resident no. Evil even encouraged it but then you would get special things like uh, you know you found out about the Meryl Easter Egg and then Snake would change costume uh, and, you, and as people went through and they were finding new ways to deal with things like the dogs you could get the puppy to pee on a cardboard box by punching Meryl and, and then when you went back to the section with the wolves and you put the box on, they wouldn't attack you because you stank a wolf piss. They'd love you. Also, you get the special <laughs> items of the stealth suit and the bandana. Yes, the bandana, which gave you infinite ammo. Completely it, broke the game, but it was yeah, hilarious. It was fun. And that's that's when like you started like playing the action side. It's like, oh, fuck it, I'm killing everybody. Which... Uh, and that's it. It encouraged you to do different things. Yeah. Like, but the, the whole... Or the, or the goal it was training you for to get the best possible medal in the game, which I think back then was Big Boss. Yeah, and that was um, beating the game in under three hours, no saves, no kills. Not get, so, not get seen, don't kill anyone, except the bosses, obviously. It was, it's impossible, it's, it's been done. Almost impossible. But it's, it, it takes a lot and you need the stealth suit. It, it was, <laughs> it's brilliant when you actually think... Um, what that game done and how it progressed and this was back in 99 and obviously 98 when 98, that came out. 99, aye. and we had to wait four years for the sequel aye um which three years sorry three, three years, years sorry. 2001 three years which we had to wait for a sequel and uh, in between you got the VR mission yeah expansion. yeah which, which was, was fun it was fun you did the job it gave you more metal gear it was I mean, and when you beat it in a hundred, I mean, I remember beating it a hundred percent, and it wasn't exactly fast to do. No, no, the, this was down. hard. The mysteries, the snake mysteries, was brilliant. Oh, fantastic it idea! F- it was basically Cluedo. It finally <laughs> let you control the ninja, but you had to do certain tasks to unlock it. Yes. So you could only get this if you'd done seventy five percent of the stealth, uh, the missions. Aye, and if you got hundred percent, you got an Easter egg, and it was a clue. And it showed you a new Metal Gear, which ah. was the hint like the sequel's coming. But was yes. it going to be in the PlayStation? And also the VR missions intro uh, was done in a PS2. So it like was. The, the intro video. That's right, I remember. Just to show off what they were working on for the new look for the, the characters. And we had, to, we had to be kept in hiatus because we didn't know if it was going to be coming on the PlayStation 2 or the PlayStation 1. At that point, I remember the PlayStation 2 was in baby idea and I remember all the screenshots of that might look like this, it might look like that. Aye. We knew and it was coming we and knew then it was when coming. VR missions actually hit, we knew Metal Gear Solid 2 was getting bumped up to it. Yeah, so we had to wait, but it, always, it was always a game, mate, that you never got bored of playing. Aye, you would always go back to even now. I still go back to it occasionally. Yeah, it, it's it's not boring at all to play. When you look at like story still driven games, than the Twin Snakes version. Yeah, yeah, the Twin Snakes version. I didn't really want to talk about that because it was a rehash of MGS two graphics, but it was shit. Um, and the reason it was shit was because they changed some of the sequences, um, and yeah. the, the storytelling, and it just didn't make yeah. sense. Um, for like. It just made Snake look too st- stupidly super. 
I made him look like a superhuman kind yeah, of character. And that's not the point of Metal Gear. No, it was Metal Gear Solid One to four done it right. Yes. Um, I've got my complaints, and we'll go into them over the course of the series. Yeah. But, you know that that was it. He was an, an extraordinary man in extraordinary circumstances. He wasn't a Superman in a Channel Five action film. No. You know, it was <laughs> it was blockbuster and. The, 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 mate, the, the the way it's held today says it all. Um, there's Aye. no, there's no anything else we can say to, I think, glorify this game. The game mm-hmm. done it itself. Um, off its I, own I would merit. hope that someone at Konami can somehow convince the people in charge to let them do Fox Engine remakes of the old games. Yeah, I, I would love. Because it would be nice to have a wee collection, and it's such a waste now that the Fox engine will have been used for Metal Gear 5, uh, a demo in the form of PT, and then Pro Evo, yeah. and it, nothing else. It's it's a, it's a shame when that engine looked amazing. And it, um, it's a great engine. Yeah. It really is. So, it's so adaptable to any system, and it looks great on every console, even the old ones. Yeah. So it would be nice to see it put to good use. I know we've got survival coming this year, but that's just a spin-off. That's yeah, not... that's that's to me no Metal Gear. Um, even no, Revengeance. Not Metal Gear at all. I yeah. love Revengeance. Re- Revengeance was brilliant. That was like the whole ninja side. Like you got the ninja. Revengeance again. had Revenge. my personal favourite Metal Gear villain. Oh, the, the, the villains were brilliant. S- it, Senator Armstrong. I, loved, I thought he was amazing. <laughs> um... <laughs> The the because we're doing the numbered versions and we're staying away from the. the we'll we'll like, probably we'll, talk about. We'll it talk by about the them because re- 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 even re- just for the soundtrack. Re- uh, yeah, revengeance <laughs> for the one of the side um the side stories like so we had portable ops and then the acid games. Uh, Revenge Babel or Babel or whatever it was called for the Game Boy. Yep. Because um, um, obviously, Peace Walker counts as the main series. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we get to we get past three, um, mm-hmm. going into five, Revengeance I still think was probably the best side side off one. That was amazing. Um, Aye. but the card one was pretty good. Acid. I enjoyed Acid. Enjoyed acid, acid was really one. good. Sentient was a bit mm, weird, but yeah. because it had it had uh, Metal Gear Solid Four, um, stuff in it. So you had if Aye. you wanted to see Metal Gear Solid Four, you had to get this game. Mm-hmm. But closing this podcast um, just now, and then we're moving on to Metal Gear Solid Two. I think, like, like I said, if you've never played this game and you've sat and listened to us to talk about it, we cannot rate this high enough. Aye, it it's what... simple by today's standards, but it's a masterpiece in game storytelling. Yeah, yeah, it's you think what you can get today. Um, if you think that's good, this was better. Aye, and it you, was a much tighter, more focused experience. Yeah. You don't, need... and it, it, it was all the better for it. Like MGS Five, yeah, sure, from a tech standpoint, wonderful achievement. Uh, Ground Zeroes in particular had some excellent level design. Mm-hmm. Uh, the AI's cracking, but it, it lost its focus both in terms of gameplay and storytelling. Yep. If you want the purest stealth experience you're going back to metal gear solid one and two yeah definitely mate definitely so everyone thank you for listening to the metal gear solid one codec memories podcast me and martin will return and we're going to talk about possibly because i can see us two disagreeing quite a oh, lot yes. in this one my opinion has changed so much in metal gear solid two over the years so it's going to be interesting to hear this. It's going, it's going to be interesting. You won't, um, you won't get similar style of what we've done for Metal Gear Solid One. We wanted something special for that because that game needed to be told. It, it was the first of its kind, yeah, and it's the first that, like non-action gun-related game that we played. Yep, definitely. So um, this, this is going to be interesting, dude. I'm quite intrigued to see what the um, next podcast is going to be. Like. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So everyone, thank you for listening to Code Deck Memories. Please leave a like in the video, sub the game and fall, 
we're growing every day. It's been immense. I cannot thank you enough. Um, same with Martin. We we just that this is a dream to us just now. We're having so much fun bringing you content nearly six days a week now. Hashtag content. Hashtag content. <laughs> it, is, it is very enjoyable. So leave a like on the video, sub the channel. You can check us out on Facebook um, and you can follow us too on Twitter. Um, everything's in the description box below um, where you find me, Martin, on Twitter. So thank you for listening and we will return with Metal Gear Solid 2. Cheerio.